You asked for it, and I procrastinated on it. But in this tutorial, I'm finally going to show you how to make a very basic grappling hook in Godot. Now before we get started, I did want to quickly mention that we now have a Discord server where we've been talking about video game development and all kinds of other things. So if that kind of thing interests you, feel free to follow the link down below. For this tutorial, we're going to be making one of the more basic kinds of grappling hooks. And that's the kind of grappling hook that the character Widowmaker uses in the game Overwatch. This tutorial builds on top of things that we've learned already in a couple of my other videos. But if you don't feel like watching the videos, pull up your web browser and go to github.com forward forward slash garbage yt forward slash godot basic grappling hook. This will take you to my github repository for this tutorial. And if you look down here, you'll see grapplestarter.gd and grapplestarter.tscn. Download both of these files and import them both into your project. And then you'll be able to follow along with the tutorial exactly as I have it in the video. The first thing we need to do is we need to go into project and project settings. And in the input map tab, we need to make sure that we have a key binding called ability. If you've been following along with my other tutorials, you most likely have this already. But if you don't, go ahead and make this binding now. Another thing you're going to want to do is click on the general tab and on the left scroll down until you get to physics and click on common and under physics FPS change it to 240. This isn't absolutely necessary and you don't have to do this but this is something that I prefer doing and if you want to follow along with my tutorial exactly then I suggest you do this as well. So here we have our grapple starter scene and it's basically just a basic first person character controller. The first thing we're going to do is right click on camera and add a child node and we're going to add a raycast node. I'm going to double click on the node and I'm going to rename it to grapplecast. Then on the right in the properties, I'm going to check the box to enable the raycast. I'm going to set the cast to zero on the Y axis, and I'm going to set the Z to minus 60, so that now we have a raycast that comes straight out of the camera. If you downloaded the grapple starter scene from my GitHub, then the main grapple node should already have a script attached to it. But if it doesn't, just click on this button right here and attach the grapple starter.gd script. So we're gonna go into the script and we're going to start coding. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write on ready var, grapplecast equals dollar sign head slash camera slash grapplecast. This is a reference to our grapplecast node so that we can get access to its properties as well as make changes to it in this script here. The next thing we're going to do is write var grappling equals false var hook point equals vector three and var hook point get equals false. And don't worry, we'll be explaining all of these things in just a few moments. So under this line of code, we're going to create a brand new function. We're going to write func grapple if input dot is action just pressed ability, if grapple cast dot is colliding, if not grappling, grappling equals true. So what we're saying here is that if we press the ability button and if our grapple cast raycast is colliding, so if this raycast here is colliding with something, if our grappling variable is false, and remember we set that to false here up here in the variables, then set grappling to true. So basically what we're doing with this block of code is that when we press the ability button, then we're saying that our character is in a state of grappling. And now all we need to do is define what grappling means. So we're going to write if grappling, fall.y equals zero. Our character has been coded to have gravity enabled. So normally if our character is in the air, then it will fall down to the floor. And that is controlled by the fall.y vector. However, when we're grappling, we don't want our character to be affected by gravity because oftentimes it's going to be pulled up into the air or someplace higher than it normally is. And so we're setting gravity to zero. Then we're going to write, if not hook point get, hook point equals grapple cast dot get collision point, and hook point get equals true. So if you remember this variable hook point, we established that it is a vector three up here. And like its name suggests, hook point is the location where our grappling hook anchors itself into some kind of object in the game world. Whether it's a wall or a ledge, hook point is that location. Hook point get is a true or false statement. And so what we're saying is that if our character is in the state of grappling, and if it hasn't gotten a hook point, then the hook point will become the point where the grapple cast collided with something in the game world. Grapple cast get collision point. And after we've gotten our hook point, then we say, okay, we got ourselves a hook point. And the reason why we need to establish if we have a hook point or not is because if we didn't, then once our character enters the grappling state, then on every single frame it's going to grab a brand new hook point, which will result in your character flying all over the place instead of grappling towards the location you want to grapple to. So once we've got our hook point, by establishing that we've gotten a hook point, then the condition of not 
having a hook point is no longer true, and so the character no longer looks for a new hook point. Next, we're going to write if hook point dot distance to transform dot origin is greater than one. So if the distance between our hook point, which is the point that we grabbed here, and transform dot origin, which is the character's physical location in the game world, if that is greater than one, if hook point get transform dot origin equals lerp transform dot origin hook point 0 0.05. So if the distance is greater than one, and if we have a hook point, then our character's position will linearly interpolate or basically smoothly transition between the character's original location and the hook point. And this number right here sort of controls how quickly the transition happens, and you can adjust this number to whatever feels good to you. Then we're going to write else and hook point get equals false. And so if the distance is less than one, else, then our character will no longer be in the grappling state and we will no longer have a hook point. And what this will result in is our grappling hook releasing and our character falling to the ground. So when it comes to functions, you can kind of think of them like as if they're completely separate computer programs that you can kind of copy and paste into another program. This function grapple is not a built-in Godot function like input or physics process. And so on its own, this function is not going to run unless we tell it to. And so here under physics process, we're going to write grapple with open and close parentheses. So what we're doing here is that on every frame, we are calling the grapple function. Basically, when we call a function, we're just saying, okay, function, run, do your thing. And at this point, we should have something that works. So now if we run the game, we can point our crosser to where we want to grapple to. And when we press the ability button, our character will move to that location. If we wanted to move up there, just press the ability button and we move up there. But there are a couple of issues. For example, if you try to grapple into the floor, you'll find that your character is stuck. To fix this, we're going to go back to the script and in our grapple function, on this line, hook point equals grapple cast dot get collision point, we're going to add plus vector three, zero, 2.250. And what this is doing is it's modifying the grapple cast collision point. And so instead of trying to grapple into the floor, we're going to try to grapple to a place that is slightly above the floor, in this case 2.25 units above where the collision point happened. And so now when you run the game, if you try to grapple into the floor, the character instead will do a little hop and then you're able to move around again. If you don't like that the character is hopping, then you can just adjust this number to be lower until you find something that does what you want it to do. There is one other problem, however. If you try to grapple into some kind of ceiling, like the underside of this platform here, you'll end up getting stuck similar to the way you were getting stuck in the floor before we modified the code. To fix this, we're going to go back to our character scene. We're going to right click on the main grapple node and add a child, and we're going to add a raycast node. I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to rename it to head bonker. We're going to click on the enable box and we'll set its cast on the Y axis to something like 1.5. You don't need to do this, but if we move our character over to the side a bit, you'll see that there's a small ray cast coming out of the top of the character's head. Let's go ahead and move the character back to its original position. Next, we're gonna go back into the script and up here in the variables, we're going to write on ready var bonker equals dollar sign head bonker. This is referring to our head bonker ray cast that we just created. Then we're gonna go back down to our grappling function and and under this block of code, we're going to write if bonker dot is colliding, grappling equals false, hook point equals null, hook point get equals false, global translate vector three, zero, minus one, zero. And so what we're saying here is that if bonker is colliding, so if our head bonker raycast is colliding with a ceiling or if your head is inside of a ceiling, then we're going to say grappling is false so that our character is no longer in the grappling state. We're resetting the hook point to nothing and we're saying that we no longer have a hook point. And finally, we're going to global translate or we're going to teleport our character down by one unit. And this is just so that if your character managed to get its head stuck inside of a ceiling or something, then it'll just move the character down a little bit so that it's no longer stuck. And so now when you run the game, if you try to hook into the ceiling, you no longer get stuck. If you wanted to change how far your grappling hook can reach, then in your character's scene, click on the grapple cast raycast node and change the cast to a bigger or smaller number. So if we set it to minus 30, then the raycast gets shorter, which effectively shortens the length of your grappling hook. 
And so at this point we have a very basic system in place, but you might find it kind of weird that right now you don't see a physical rope whenever you grapple somewhere. And so in an upcoming video, I'll be showing you how to create ropes and laser beams and other things like that. This also isn't a perfect grappling system in that there are still some rare occasions where you might find your character getting stuck in some kind of object or obstacle. And at the moment, I'm not sure how to figure those problems out. But hopefully by watching this tutorial, you got something useful out of it and perhaps maybe you can find a way to use this mechanic in your own game. In the future, if I'm able to figure out how to do them, I would love to be able to show you more complicated grappling hook systems, like the kind you would see in Spider-Man or Apex Legends, but I can't make any guarantees because I'm not a smart dude, and those are some pretty complicated mechanics, but I will definitely try my best to make them work. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, subscribe it, share it, bell it, and comment it. Thank you. Have a nice day.